Hi, and welcome to the Fairwinds Energy Education Podcast for Thursday, June 27th. My name is Nathaniel white Joyle, and today I am joined by Arnie Gunderson, Chief Engineer at Fairwinds, and by Lou Zeller from the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League. So, Lou, will you tell us a little bit about the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League and the work that you guys are doing? Sure. Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League was founded back in 1984 when the people in western North Carolina and southwest Virginia learned about a federal project. The United States Department of Energy had established a uh, crystalline repository project based on the Nuclear Waste Policy Act of 1982. Uh, passed in Congress, and the whole objective was to find some place to dump uh, 70,000 uh, tons of high-level radioactive waste. That is the irradiated fuel that comes out of all of the commercial nuclear reactors in, in the country. At this point, there's 104 of them left. Um, but at the time, we were concerned because they were looking at various geological formations in the southern Appalachian regions. Granite rock, for example, is one of the media they considered uh, for drilling a hole down 1,000, 2,000 feet and burying this stuff. Uh, they considered other areas in the country, for example, salt domes in the Mississippi, Texas area. They were looking at rock bodies and geology in Maine and Wisconsin and and like I say, all across the southeast, particularly Virginia, North Carolina, and Georgia, had some of those sites. And in fact, one of the 12 sites which had gotten preliminary uh, screening, made it through the preliminary screening approval, uh, was about 20 miles from my home in North Carolina. And so that's when I became part of the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League that happened. And I joined it in 1986. And I've been with them ever since. Now, we the project on the uh, high-level nuclear waste dump, you know, evolved over several years. And what happened was that the outcry that we and others raised because of the serious questions, unresolved engineering questions and basic problems that there are with the whole fundamental idea of putting waste material, which is dangerous for a quarter of a million years, in a hole in the ground, ultimately caused uh, Congress to change the law, and uh, that happened in 1987, and that was called the Screw Nevada Bill, uh, which they said, oh, well, you know, there's not so much nuclear waste as we thought there was, so we only need one dump. See, originally they had planned to have one in the east and one in the west. So anyway, that, that of course, fell apart early during the last few years, where Yucca Mountain site in Nevada was also deemed to be unsuitable, so basically they're back to square one, but Blue Ridge... Environmental Defense League got founded, like I say, back in the 1980s because of the threat to the uh, public health, threat to the communities in, uh, in our backyard. Thanks, Lou. So let's shift direction here. Let's talk about the shakeup at the top of the Tennessee Valley Authority and how the merger between Progress and Duke Energy fits into that. And maybe you can fill us in a bit on the response that the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League has had. There's been a new chairman of Tennessee Valley Authority who uh, previously came from Progress. And he drove Progress into the ground uh, by um, allowing Crystal River Unit 3 to, um, to, to sit for four years uh, when it couldn't be repaired. And also pumping a couple billion dollars into Levy County, a... Um, an AP-1000 plant in, in Florida. It was uh, TVA uh, announced back in November last year, 2012, that they had uh, hired William D. Johnson, uh, Bill Johnson, the former chairman and the chief executive officer of Progress Energy uh, to become president and CEO of TVA. This was to be effective January of this year. So. Um, the way that meeting happened, uh, the way that decision was made, is highly questionable to begin with, Arnie. Um, but they hired uh, the former Progress CEO, who was fired by Duke within a matter of hours after the Duke and Progress merger had occurred, um, and uh, without even a formal meeting, without a formal vote. TVA did this. Uh, and hired this man 
uh, using a procedure which is called notational procedure. So in other words, members of the TVA board uh, cast votes without any deliberation or discussion. They voted separately. And according to the TVA statements and, the, and a review by the, their inspector general, uh, they meant that they could not discuss the candidate's qualifications uh, or otherwise deliberate with one another about the selection. Basically, the board hired uh, a pig in a poke and agreed to pay him millions of dollars uh, without even so much as a conversation. So that is questionable there. This is this is one that sent off alarm bells all across uh, uh, the area that, that Blue Ridge works in, which includes you know Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, and uh, and elsewhere. Hang on here, Lou. Um... So you're telling me that the guy who drove Progress Energy into the in, into the ditch, who then got a job with Duke that he was thrown out of after he had been on the job for all of about six hours, was hired by Tennessee Valley Authority without deliberation. Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure I got that clear. But but the whole the Duke and Progress um, merger. Is 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 equally uh, suspicious uh, because the way it happened, uh, you know, the TV uh, Duke Energy and and Progress Energy have uh, created a, this giant uh, investor-owned utility. In fact, it it is now the largest investor-owned utility on the planet, and that's according to the present CEO Jim Rogers of Duke Energy, of the merged corporation. Um, it was a $26 billion merger between these two companies with headquarters in, in North Carolina, but uh, with operations all over the eastern United States. Um, so the merger happened, and with, as you said, within a matter of hours, uh, the man who was supposed to be CEO of that merged company uh, Bill Johnson, within a matter of hours, he was booted. Um, it was kind of a boardroom coup, I think the Wall Street Journal uh, described it as. Um, and they replaced him with Jim Rogers, who had run Duke Energy uh, before uh, the merger deal. And uh, there was this was a, a you know this was a lot of bitter. Um, acrimonious debate which happened at the time, letters back and forth about bad faith and all in it. And, uh, you know, we had questions about this as well. Many of us in North Carolina that follow uh, the details of Duke Energy and Progress Energy over the years had questions about this and, and raised the issues before the, the State Utilities Commission. Um, the, for example, uh, Progress uh, board members seemed to be uh, very unhappy about it. They said that they would not have voted for the merger of Duke and Progress uh, had they known that uh, the CEO of the former CEO of Duke, Jim Rogers, would remain as CEO of this of this new company. You know, frankly, I, I think the uh, uh, the Progress, even though they lost their their head, um, still came out pretty damn good. They uh, uh, th their company was was in the ditch. You know, the Crystal River was uh, uh, was falling apart or had fallen apart. Levy County is never going to get built, and they've got a couple billion sunk into it. And the Brunswick plant, which they had uh, also been operating, had uh, had poor operating ratings. So um, here's a company that was in the ditch, and um, and uh, and Duke uh, pulled them out. Um, so um, while it, the, the board of progress may be upset. You know, frankly, I think uh, they didn't have much of a bargaining position here. Well, it may be crocodile tears, you know, because Bill, uh, you know, Johnson, um, Bill Johnson got a sweetheart deal. Uh, his his uh, severance package, I read, is probably in order in the, in the area of forty four million bucks, um, which includes a payment of. One and a half million. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off, Luke. Did you say forty-four million dollars? Yeah, severance packages. And Luke, this, this guy worked six hours. It includes a payment of up to one point five million dollars, but on the condition he'd not say anything bad about Duke Energy, the new merger, or the old Duke. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, well, you know, there it is. And so uh, this this all happened in, uh, you know, the merger and the ouster. That's all, you know, we're in mid-2012. And then so a few months later, uh, Bill Johnson shows up and uh, to Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, TVA uh, headquarters as their new boss. And um, it's uh, with, uh, with similar kind of shenanigans. Um, uh, putting him in, in, and you know, you pointed out quite correctly. You know, there are good, there are serious matters, which should have been raised about uh, Bill Johnson's uh, tenure as CEO of Progress Energy. Apparently, they didn't bother uh, Duke Energy during the merger. Uh, in other words, they did appoint him, but then they booted him. What is going on here? What we see is that you know this. Um, Jim Rogers is is a pretty aggressive um, CEO. He started out what 20 years ago or so with uh, uh, Public Service Indiana in 1988, I think it was, beginning of, uh, and, and had, has continued to rise to the top as CEO as utilities merged. Uh, Public Service uh, Indiana merged with Cincinnati Gas and Electric. Uh, that formed Synergy. Synergy is acquired by Duke Energy in 1994. Uh, Rogers became CEO of uh, Duke in 2006. And um, so there is an aggressive move um, on the part of these captains of industry to consolidate and merge. And I think they're licking their chops over you know, picking up the nation's largest public utility, and that would be TVA. It's inescapable. I mean, it, you know, when, when Bill Johnson was put in as head of TVA, I tell you what, all the flash and arrow signs that I could imagine were, were um, and alarm buzzers were going off because we said, what the heck is going on here? Is Bill Johnson, you know, that big a catch where they'd want to put him in without reviewing it? Um, his ouster from Duke, uh, the Duke, uh, the new combined Duke Progress Energy, uh, was suspicious enough. But the sweetheart package that he got out of that, and then his uh, accession uh, to TVA, is very suspicious. In other words, who is in the best position now to take over TVA? If indeed it goes on the chopping block, because the president, in his uh, 2014 budget has ordered a review um, of the sale of TVA to private interests. Even though TVA operates solely for income from rate payers, it has a debt of $25 billion, certainly, but the debt's not backed by the federal government. In other words, taxpayers are not liable for it. Um, but it is included in the overall federal debt total. So does the sale of the utility eliminate $25 billion worth of red ink with the stroke of a pen for the federal government? Is that in the interest of the United States to do that at the cost of uh, jettisoning an agency like TVA, which is, um, despite some of the mistakes it has made, still, I think, a good example of uh, a public utility which did very many good things in its early years in particular. And I mentioned those uh, in terms of flood control and improvement of the economy in the, uh, in the Tennessee Valley area.